We are in the most populous borough in New York City, the BK, Brooklyn, inside Barclays Center. It's time for Big Three Basketball. Here's a look at our lineup. We're going to begin with the Red Hot Triplets in Tri-State, led by Dr. J, taking on Ben Bivouac and the Three-Headed Monsters. And we'll end the afternoon with Trilogy, taking on the Killer Threes. As we take a look at the standings in the league, where there's just two teams unbeaten, the triplets, the killer threes, and then you've got about four teams there trying to keep pace with just one loss. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer alongside my partner, Jim Jackson. And Jim, you saw it, just two teams unbeaten in the big three. We're going to see those teams in action today, as well as two of the top scorers in the league in Joe Johnson and Amari Stoudemire. Well, a lot of action this weekend. The two unbeaten teams remain once the day is over. Of course, the top scorers in the league and also two guys that are getting looks from the NBA. But this is moving week right now. Teams that are bunched up in between want to kind of maintain where they're at. But also, if you're the leaders, if you're undefeated, you want to continue on with that streak to ensure that the playoff race is in your favor. All right, let's take a look at the team's roster. They're brought to you by State Farm. And for the triplets, it's all about ISO Joe Johnson. He leads the big three in scoring. For Tri-State, Amari Stoudemire, third in the big three in scoring as well. And when you talk about the triplets, it's all Joe Johnson. What, 6'8", about 245, Joe Johnson. Once he gets, gets isolated, able to get that big body inside. You see, eyeing the double team, it didn't come. One-on-one, -on -one, jump hook, you can't stop it. But then, as he sees the double team start to occur, the savviness, the instinct to find the open man, Al Jefferson, does a great job of relocating. Of course, Joe is able to get the ball down low to an open man in Amari Stoudemire. Worked out for about 12 or 15 NBA teams last week in Vegas. Still showing the flashes of greatness that we saw in the NBA. 22 points again, can put it on the deck. Loves the baseline jump shot. Think about this, two former teammates of mine at Phoenix, Joe Johnson and Amari Stoudemire. Not ironic that both are right up there leading this league in scoring. Well, the Tri-State squad, they're led by that man. His number is hit, hanging from the rafters here at Barclays Center. Julius, Dr. J. Irving. Here's the jersey hanging from the rafters here at Barclays Center. And for the triplets, Hall of Famer as well. Lisa Leslie, she's done it all. Won a championship in the WNBA, gold medals in the Olympics, and an actor. Betty Lou from Uncle Drew. Hey, listen, that's what you call being uh, multidimensional as a player, as a person, <laughs> to be able to do a little bit of everything. Here's the triplets. Inside, Al Jefferson gets the first two points of the day. And you know what? It, ironically, you see the rules right here, the key rules to the game. But one thing Lisa Leslie wants this team to do, she loves the fact that Joe Johnson did his own shot. But it's a matter of other guys really stepping up so Joe doesn't have to carry the full weight of the scoring line. Nate Robinson threw it up. Joe Johnson in the lane. Here's Nate Robinson now. Step back for three. And Sergio Gibson with that left hand knocks down the three. And how about the change in lineup? Last week we saw it was Allen Anderson that started. But I think with Gibson in there, what happens is Allen can come off the bench and be really utilized more in the scoring role when Joe comes out the game. So a really good strategic move by Coach Leslie. Stat. This is the jumper, Joe Johnson, the three. Gibson crashing the board. That foul is going to be on Nate Robinson. Tri-State looking to get another W. Tough win last week. Now, the triples is a team that have gone to the half down. They went. They were down by 11 oh, yeah. last week. They were down by 10 the week before that. But in the second half, it's always been Joe Johnson. They've talked about better starts today, Jim. Yeah, I think that's why the change in the lineup, too, for Coach Leslie was to be able to take some of the scoring load off of Joe, more importantly, the wear and tear, so he's fresher down the stretch of the game so he can finish it off. And they're talking about fresh. And yeah. Lawrence out of my knee. Playing with Stad in Phoenix, the appreciation I have for his intelligence, but also the ability to beat you in so many ways. Unfortunately, you know, of course, he had the knee issues 
ladder in his career, but it was a time and period when Amari was just unstoppable. Here's Joe Johnson with two on the shot clock. Turns, fires. Stoudemire has it. Down three. Nate Robinson, there's a bump on Gibson. Five to two, your score. The triplets over Tri-State. And i like to see that pick and roll a little bit more with, with Robinson and, and Stoudemire. The reason why you bring Al Jefferson out of the paint, Amari is crafty enough to the jump shot by Richardson. <laughs> Somebody close the door, please. But that pick and roll, I think, in particular with these two players, it forces Al Jefferson to guard on the perimeter, which he's not as comfortable with, because Amari is an excellent shooter from, you know, 15, 18, 20 feet. You can see Lisa Leslie saying, why is that not our basketball? She thought that was an air ball. There you hear the referee say it got deflected off of one of the triplets out of bounds. So far, Tri-State one of six from the field. Oh, that pass intercepted. Stack got it back and dunks it home. Amari Stoudemire. Not rocket science, the pick and roll. Gibson had it temporarily, but the ball sometimes doesn't bounce your way, and Amari able to gather and finish inside. Again, the, the, that pick and roll when you clear the corner is so tough to, to take away, especially when you have a guy like Nate Robinson that can explode off the pick, put so much pressure on the defense to say, okay, do I stop the ball, do I give up the jump shot? And Amari does an excellent job of clearing enough space in order to give himself room to operate. Tied up at five, Stoudemire, all five of Tri-State's points. Here's Teddy Gibson, the three. Missed it. Gibson again, kick out. Iso, jump. It looks like Gibson and Nate Robinson had a collision. Take a look at the collision underneath both guys. Oh, right there, Al Jefferson. Unintentionally, like he got hit in the eye. So, and then oh. <laughs> to add insult to injury, Gibson hustling. But I think it was the initial hit in the eye that probably caught more of the damage for Nate Robinson. Here's the good news Nate is up. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, Brian, you play the sport, it's like when it's unexpected. Yeah. When you get hit like that, you can't protect yourself. So I've, I've gotten hit in the eye before. Let's go on the court. I'm Michael Rappaport, third member of our team. What's up, Rat? All right, well, one of the toughest guys who ever played professional basketball, Nate Robinson, he went down. I think he's a f uh, fine. My bet is that he's going to be back on the court. A little shot to the eyes, a little, uh, little water in the eyes. This is unprecedented access live from Brooklyn, but uh, no blood, no foul. I guarantee you Nate Robinson will be back to finish out this game in the borough of Brooklyn. All right, thank you. You can see that the shirt, the jersey over his face, Nate Robinson. I think Rap next time needs to start his report like, I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to play one right now on television. No, no, you know. What is that, the commercial state of the holiday in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... He's, uh, he's uh, what is it, jack of all trades, master of none? Yeah. But that's not good news no. right there. Hopefully, it, you know, a lot of times what you don't see with an eye injury, and I'm not saying this is it. That concussion, too, with the elbow. Concussion. And if, if it could have been a hand, sometimes you have a scratch. Yeah. You know, and I've been there, done that, but hopefully it's not that serious for Nate. He's able to come back in the game. Three on the shot clock. Joe, good defense. Chase, pull, no. Three-point lead here for the triplets. First team to 25, we go to the half. I think if you try to say one thing you want with Joe, you want Joe to beat you from outside. Not that he can't, but the percentages are more in your favor if you can keep Joe Johnson on the perimeter and keep that big body outside of the lane where he's lethal. 
Missed that from the foul line. Knocks it down. Uh, Marty Stoudemire has all seven of Tri-State's points. But you notice Al Jefferson was stuck where? Deep inside the lane. That's where the advantage is with Stack, is that he's able to step, catch, make a decision. And if you don't come and contest, he'll make you pay. Allen Anderson, the three, short. In the stat in the post, working on Jefferson. Baseline, did he step out? They're going to call a push, I think, on Al Jefferson. Just right below, right there. It's, it's, it's subtle, but just even that little dislodging push stat under the rim a little bit more, so that's why the official made the call. Here's Allen Anderson again from the corner. The three, no. Jefferson rejected by Stack. And the follow up by Al. Stage with it. Ten seven. Inside. Stoudemire fakes. Pulls. Money. Great patience that time by Stack, knowing that the defense was going to react. That little hesitation gave enough time. Now that throws the defense. Again, showing that soft touch inside the lane. Stat averages 22. He's got nine already. There he is. Here's the leading scorer in the big three. They're going to call that one foul on Yakuba D.O.R. It's Ice Cube. Takes a look from courtside. One point lead here for the triplets. Anderson thought about the four. Will take the three instead, mm. knocks it down. 14 and nine are scored. Four point lead for the triplets. Joe Johnson and company trying to remain unbeaten. We're in the BK football. It's big three basketball. You're watching Big Three Basketball here on CBS. Triplets up 13 to nine on Tri-State. Mari Stoudemire's got all nine of Tri-State points. Worked out for some NBA squad on Monday. 12 to 15 squads. Right now, he's on the court with our Michael Rappaport. How about some hardcore? Yeah, he likes it more. Mari Stoudemire, how you feeling being back on the floor in Brooklyn? It feels good, man. It's always good to play basketball at a high level, man. I feel great. Al Jefferson, you guys are banging down in the post. Talk about that matchup. Big Al and I have been battling, man, for a long time in the NBA, so it's good to see him out here. It's good to play against him again. All right, well, you got all nine points. Keep it going. Good luck in the rest of the game. Amari Stoudemire, we're doing Brooklyn hip-hop references all day, B. Custer. That was a little MOP. How about some hardcore? Yeah, we like it raw in Brooklyn. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you like it grimy here in the BK. Love it, rap. Amari Stoudemire. Four of six from the field, Jake. Well, listen, since we're doing hardcore hip-hop, get money. That's what Amari <laughs> is doing right now. Getting his money on, his money bag, showing you a variety of ways that he can put the ball in the hoop again. NBA fans are accustomed to seeing Stat put up big numbers, and it's no different than what he's doing right now in the big three. Yeah, since we're in Brooklyn, on everything, son, I'm giving you bucks. <laughs> That's what Stat is telling him. <laughs> Here's Jay Rich. Pull up. Mm -hmm. Two point lead now for the triplets. And rhythm jump shot right there by Rich. Couldn't really get by Joe Johnson, but the rhythm dribble got him to about 15 feet where he's comfortable to knock in that jump shot. Finally, another player besides Stoudemire knocks down the jumper. Here's Jay Rich again. And we're all tied up here. First team to 25. We go to the half. And Tri State able to take advantage off the turnover that time. I think it was Johnson thought that Allen Anderson was going to shoot. Had his head down and unfortunately coughed it up. Anderson, ball fake drive, lays it in. He's got five points, two point lead now for the triplets. And that's how you make up for a turnover, you know? Identifying the defense, knew that Richardson was flying at him, little pump fake, easy lane to the basket. Good screen, Jay Rich the three, no, and tipped out. Looks like it's out on Chris Johnson. Yeah. 
So it's Tri-State basketball. Gennaro Pargo will check in for the triplets. Anderson will have a seat. Here's Stat again. Lost it. Pargo now. Step back three. Got it. You want to make your presence felt? Come into the game, pick up a loose ball, step behind the three-point line and knock it in. Pargo spent 11 years in the NBA. Now an assistant for the Portland Trail Blazers. Getting back down. His first. Well, part of the issue, too, like you have a mismatch like that down low with Pargo, it's important, imperative, that whoever's guarding the ball doesn't allow that pass shift jumps out up top. That pass to get in easily. If not, you can't come back and help on that mismatch inside. Chris Johnson lays it in. 7-0 run now by the triplets. They're up seven. Well, how many times have we seen the triplets where kind of struggle offensively, then all of a sudden they go through the scoring burst and kind of distance themselves from their opponent. DOR misses the three. The simple basketball. Move, cut, pass, finish. All six of the triplets have scored so far. Just two members of Tri-State have put points on the board. Pargo for four. Mm, almost. Here's Jay Rich. Inside the stack. Shoulder inside L. Man. He took him to the Brooklyn Zoo. No doubt put that beef on him. But, you know, Amari, deep post position, used that shoulder to dislodge Johnson. You see a steal right here by Jay Rich. See if he can take advantage of it. Jay Rich spins and lays it in. The former slam dunk king. Oh, we got a good one here. It's cooking in Brooklyn. Three-point lead for the triplets. Pargo behind the back. Pull up for three. Count it. Oh. And actually, Jay Rich did an outstanding job of getting over the pick, but Pargo able to create space like Amari did right there with another shoulder right into the chest of Chris Johnson. But Pargo, I mean, Jay Rich able to get it in, and then off of the steal, Jay Rich feeling the body contact, knowing he had middle wide open at that time. Joe Johnson not in a position to help. Jay Rich, I have a seat. So here's Amari Stoudemire at the line. Third leading score in the big three. Knocks down the free throws. He's now got 13. Four point lead for the triplets. Who've been cooking from three. They go to Iso Joe. Kick out, Al Jefferson. Driving at the shot, he won. That's why Stad, Amari Sotomayor didn't. He wasn't in a rush to get out there to contest that shot by Jefferson, which is a smart play. DOR missed the turnaround. Here's Joe Johnson. Pargo for three. Yes! Gennaro Pargo has come in and lit it up from distance and the triplets with a seven point lead as we go to the half. Again, make your presence felt. And again, it's the attraction of attention that Joe Johnson finds on the court. And again, if you're Pargo, any other player, space yourself, get yourself ready to shoot. Once you get it, take advantage of it and knock it in. Pargo, three of three from distance, nine points. And the triplets up by seven here at the half. Let's go to rap. He's with the head coach of the triplets, Lisa Leslie. In the first half, there wasn't any half stepping from the triplets. Coach Lisa Leslie, what are you guys going to do to pull this game out? Well, it's all about our execution and then just not getting complacent just because we're up right now. There's still some things we can do better. Getting ISO Joe, obviously their game plan is to double him and stop him, and his teammates are stepping up big, knocking down shots. We have to continue to do that. What about Amari Stoudemire? He had a big first half. What are you guys going to do to contain him? 
I don't know that we can stop Amari, but if we can contain the rest of the guys, I think we can come out with the win. All right, well, Annie up. I'm here with the coach and the Hall of Famer, Lisa Leslie. All right. Rat, thanks. That's the end of the first half. Your score of the triplets, 26, Tri-State, 19. We're back in Brooklyn right after these messages. Big Three Basketball on CBS Sports is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. VH1 Basketball Wives, new season, check your local listing. And by Toyota, let's go places. Hello, hello Brooklyn, how you doing? I'm here with the good Dr. Julius Irving. First of all, Brooklyn basketball. The history of Brooklyn basketball. Speak on it real quick. Oh, it, it's awesome, man. Let me tell you. Uh, you know, guys who play with me, like World B. Free, uh, the King brothers, Bernard, Doc King, and Albert King, and uh, just a host of guys come out of, come out of Brooklyn. Uh, Bed Stuy, always known to have great basketball players. So as a teenager, you know, I was able to come through and try and do my thing, but uh, I, I learned more than I taught. Uh, Julius, you guys are down by a few points. What are you going to do to get tighten things up and pull out this win? I think we're all right. I mean, we only have two guys who have registered on the board with Amari and Jason. So, so we need some contribution from a few different places and also run some guys off that three-point line. Well, you're looking sharp. You're looking decadent. I'm sure this is custom, unlike Jimmy Jackson. He wears off the rack only. I'm, from, I'm with the good doctor, Julius Irving. Live from Brooklyn, fellas. <laughs> Decadent. Did he you, know, de you know that's outside his vocabulary. He's just throwing words right now. <laughs> that you don't even know what it means. I was going to say that that's no cake. You know what I mean? Anyway, welcome back to Brooklyn. Brian Cutter alongside Jim Jackson at the half here. And hey, Triplets with a seven-point lead. And as Doc pointed out, they're getting contributions from the three-point line. Meanwhile, for Tri-State, just two guys on the board. What? That's the contrast. That's the difference. The Triplets, six players contributed on the board. Only two for Tri-State. You have to try to switch that a little bit because contributions across the board are going to assist. Now, Nate Robinson not coming back in the game. That does impel the offensive threat, I think, of Tri-State. So let's see how the adjustments are Coach uh, Dr. J adjust in the second half without having Nate. As we take a look at our star watch, you can see Joe Johnson with just three. Amari Stoudemire has got 13, and Stett is wired for sound. Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Yes, sir. Great talk, great talk. By yourself, you by yourself. Hey, look right, right. Ooh. Big boy. That's the M1, too. I love it, man. I mean, the communication part of a lot of times it gets lost in the game, even at this level. It's so important that you communicate early and often, loud, so your teammates can hear you. Sad having the ball out there. Jason Richardson. It's the jumper. He's got eight. Just he and Stat, only members of Tri-State who have scored. They're down five here to the triplets. Yeah, and Robert Height coming in in the second half, getting the starting nine could be huge for them from an offensive perspective. You know that man gets hot in the second half. Joe Johnson, he's now got five. Leads the big three in scoring. He's scored nearly half of the triplets' points this season. Mm. Here's Stat. Robert Height inside the Jason Richardson reverses and lays it in. Activity on the offensive glass allowed Jason Richardson to be the recipient of an and one with a possibility. But here, good defense by Joe Johnson. Height in the right place, right time. And Rich still showing that bounce with the finish inside. He's got 12. And all of a sudden, the lead is just four for the triplets. Yeah, and I like the attack in the second half by Tri-State coming out aggressive. Now defensively, is it where they're really going to have to hone in and try to get multiple stops, which is tough to do against this triplets team. Pargo misses that three. Mm. Richardson dumps it home. Jason Richardson with 13. And the lead is just two. It was a seven-point lead at the half. Great defense that time by Scott. Stoudemire inside. Jim Rich. It's two-man game here by Tri-State. They're in a 7-0 run, and we're tied up. 
You want to get yourself back in the game, step up on the defensive end. Jay Rich was saying the end of the play as a result of a turnover. Jay Rich able to capitalize. Again, still showing the bounce inside, and then the active hands, the anticipation by Amar. It gets another opportunity and a layup for Jay Rich inside, and now we have a tie score. Richardson with all nine of Tri-State's points here in the second half. Hey, you want your sports news without the yelling and the fake debates? Stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 network for non-stop highlights and news. Download the CBS Sports app today. Lisa Leslie talking to her triplet squad. One of two unbeatens here in the big three. Well, you know, part of the issue when you turn the ball over, especially in a half-court environment, is that you turn it over, it leads right to an easy basket. So you, you got to cut down on those little mental mistakes because defensively you're not going to be able to recover when you turn it over deep. But you can always lean on Joe, yes, even with – even with Jay Rich, the size advantage inside when they isolate him on the block and he's able to get that body in the middle, there's not too much you can do but hope he misses. Joe's got Stat. seven. Here's that. Kick out. Jay Rich for three. Robert Height follows it up and in. We're tied up again. First team to 50. Wins it. You got to win by two. First two points for Height. And the first two points by someone else other than Richardson and Stoudemire. And Jay Rich right there, he wants to foul on Al Jefferson for the illegal screen in the back, which caused him to foul Joe Johnson. Just watch at the physical nature, a little bit right there. But back to work for Joe Johnson, the triplets offensively. Here's Joe, step back, pull, count it. I saw Joe. He's got nine now. Come on, man. You know Joe put in work here in Brooklyn in this very arena, so he's very familiar with Parker, the surroundings. The steal. Joe mm -hmm. for four. He says it was tipped. Let's Did Rich see. get a piece? No. Nah. Here's Jay Rich. That one's short. Jefferson the board. Pargo knocked down three threes in that first half. Oh, give him a headsy mm. pull up. Uh, off the rim. It's Joe. Spins. Oh, Joe Johnson, don't do him like that. Did you see the look off? As he got the ball on the baseline, kind of looked towards the middle, knowing he had the baseline open, quick spin, easy layup. He's got all eight of the triplet points until Al Jefferson lays those two in. Six-point lead for the triplets. They're on a 6-0 run, trying to remain unbeaten. Here's Jay Rich now. Robert Height just picked up by Tri-State this week. Pull up, short. Got his board, and he'll go to the line. I like the activity of Height. I mean, got picked up because of the deactivation of Bonzi Wells and height gives you the ability to make some plays and knock down some shots he's already making his presence felt in the second half the thing that Tri-State has to do which is tough is that you got to stop these little runs by the triplets you know the four six eight point runs eight old runs you can't do that it has to be a bucket or two then stop it then you have to respond this team is too good the triplets to allow them to continue to kind of make those runs in the end you'd end up coming up short as we see with the other three teams that they defeated thus far. Height knocks down the free throw. So the lead is four now. They go inside to Joe Johnson. Mm. Step back, mm. turn around. Oh, my! This man is grimy in Brooklyn. Ten points in the second half by Joe Johnson. And the triplets up six on Tri-State. He leads the big three in scoring, and he's going to work. Big three basketball here on CBS.
Well, see why everyone's talking about the new reality sensation, Love Island, Monday through Friday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. Six-point lead for the triplets, thanks to Joe Johnson. He had just three points at the half, but boy, in the second half, he's come out smoking. 13 points now, JJ. Yeah, but it's not a matter of how many shots is when you take them. You know by the leading score, you're going to get touches. So you don't have to force the situation. And Joe does an outstanding job of feeling out when he has to start to go to work. He's a guy, I say, he's no average Joe. And he's with rap. He's no average Joe. He's got a freaky, freaky, freaky deaky flow going. <laughs> Joe, what are you going to do to close this puppy out here in Brooklyn? Uh, we just got to keep imposing our will on these guys, man. We got to work harder than them, and uh, we got to get some stops. And real quick, how does it feel to be back in the borough? Uh, it feels great. Uh, I love New York, man. I'm glad we got a chance to make a stop here and get to interact with the fans. All right, well, good luck closing this out, Joe Johnson. Namaste, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Namaste. He's got a freaky, 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 freaky flow. Hey, hey, hey uh, can I ask you a question, yep. Brad? That shirt looks really like it's at Nordstrom's rack or something. My man. I mean, it's off the rack. I mean, I, I haven't got a, a suit off the rack in years, bro. My, my man, my man. What? You see the way it fits? This is a custom cut fit. This is custom. This is all custom. Not, Beverly to, not to your body. Shut, that shut. was custom for somebody else. It's a little wide in the belly area. Shout out to Anthos <laughs> in Beverly Hills. <laughs> That's the good living he got going on. You better believe it. Living really good eating a snack right now. Look. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Amari Stoudemire held scoreless thus far here in the second half. Well, really hasn't the gotten the looks yet. I mean, again, you lose a little bit from that pick and roll we talked about before with Nate Robinson. But what was good for Amari was kind of finding his niche right there in the middle of the court, but also on the low post to be able to get his shots up. Here's Al Jefferson from the foul line. Knocks it down. Contributions, man. He's got eight. This triple team, Brian, you talked about it. Being able to depend and rely on different guys to keep the defense honest and not just focusing in on Joe Johnson. 10-2 run by the triplets. Stat shot blocked by Jefferson. It's their largest lead for the triplets. And they go to Al Jefferson. Pulls up. In and out. Joe Johnson, though, collects the board. Back to Joe. Turns on height. Oh, no dream shape. Missed it. Jefferson, follow. Yes. Just a little thing. Amari peeking a little bit to see if he needed to help allow Al Jefferson to navigate his way in there and get that offensive rebound. That's the effect when you have a player, the causing effect when you have a player as dominant as Joe Johnson when he gets on the post. If you keep your eye right here, look at Amari. See how he inches over? Now Al Jefferson's able to get it, even with a little push off, he's able to get inside, get the rebound, and now score the basket at the end of the shot clock. Well, Friday night, 7 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you more WNBA action as the red-hot Washington Mystics takes on the Indiana Fever on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Lisa Leslie, she has drawn up 15 plays for this triplet squad. Drew up another one last night because as she talked about, I don't want us to be so dependent on Joe Johnson. And you know what? She's getting the contributions here today. But the, the, what I love about it, especially for a first year coach, is to see the adjustments that they make in regards to time management, game management, but also play call. You get a better sense and feel on how to operate three on three half court. And that's operating right there with Rich outside off the pass from the morning. But those are the adjustments that coaches continue to make once they get a sense and feel of the game, the flow, but also their team. Tri-State knocks down their first three of the game. Here's Al Jefferson. Knocks it down. Takes the ball from Stack. Jefferson's got 12. Triplets are just six points away from victory. First team to 50 wins. Here's Jay Rich. Off the screen. Picked up by Johnson. Jay Rich off the glass. You know, I like that play, a little two-man game, and it kind of a handoff, and Rich, Jay Rich was able to sprint off the pick. 
and then lean into which looked like an easy shot, but it's still a tough shot on the move to make it softly up the glass. Oh, good dish to Al Jefferson. All of a sudden, the triplet just four points away from victory. D.O.R. now for Tri-State has checked in. Rich has got 20. Here's Stack. That is short. Joe Johnson. He can end it with a four. What are you saying? He's going to end it. it. Did you go? He's, it. It. <laughs> He's the ordinary Joe. Another game winner for Joe Johnson. Hey, Brian, do me a favor, bro. Give me the number for next week so I can play it in the Mega Millions because you just called it out. But since we're in Brooklyn, of course, bro, you can't knock the hustle of Joe Johnson right here. Occupying the defense, setting it up the whole time. Feeling that now was the time to knock in this three. Oh, four point play, four point shot I mean. And Jay Rich not respecting it, saying that you can take it. Joe Johnson says, thank you very much. The triplets remain unbeaten at four and oh, thanks to Joe Johnson. Even Q says, got to shake his head to that. 17 points, seven boards, four assists, and he's on the court right now with our Michael Rapper boy. I didn't see any sweat trickling down your cheek when you shot that. You weren't watching the same game? Four-point shot. Talk about that shot. Do you ever think there'll be a four-point shot in the NBA? Uh, no, but out here is great. Uh, we had the momentum, and I knew we needed four points to win, so why not? You guys are undefeated. How much fun are you having this season playing on the undefeated triplets in your debut in the big three? Uh, I love it, man. I look forward to every weekend. Uh, I train hard throughout the week to prepare myself for Saturday or Sunday. So to get a chance to come out here and compete at a high level, man, uh, it was great. Well, I know that meant a lot to see everybody here in Brooklyn to see you play. You're playing fantastic. Keep going. Stay healthy. Good luck with the rest of the season. ISO Joe. Thank you, man. I love it. He's not an average Joe by any means, my friend. Not at all. Wow. Joe Johnson has done it again with another game winner for the triplets who remain unbeaten. Joe Johnson had a game winner in week one. See Joe isolated up top. Welcome to the big three. I'm glad to be here. Let me show you how to get it done. That's one. But Joe's getting a little greedy. He said, I love the feeling of securing a W for my team. And then, why not? I've done it with a layup. I've done it with a jump shot. Now let's do it with a four-point shot to accentuate why I'm the current favorite to be the big three MVP. The triplets led wire to wire. And they're unbeaten at 4-0. It's the Big Three here on CBS.